Dr. Roger Marshall. Senator Marshall, thank you for joining us. You bet, Rebecca. It's great to be back with you, especially on set. Great to have you here. Well, I know you led this week of action here in Kansas. What are some of the goals of this campaign, would you say? Yeah, well, Rebecca, with our students going back to school, for the most part this week, last week, next week, we want to get the word out there that every parent, every teacher, every grandfather, grandmother, that they understand that one pill can kill. One fake pill laced with fentanyl can kill an, an adult. And right now in Kansas, it's easier and cheaper to get a fentanyl tablet than it is to order pizza online. That that your grandchild, that your your daughter, your son could go on Snapchat right now for a dollar a pill. They could order fentanyl. And again, just one pill can kill. This is, uh, this is an accidental poisoning is what it is. From my understanding, I know you've spoken with law enforcement and healthcare leaders about this issue. What was the most shocking statistic, do you think, that you've heard thus far that you didn't know before? What were some of the key takeaways from this week? Well, I think, you know, just number one, that in addition to losing one cans in a day, we're also using Narcan 10 or 15 times a day. I, you know, spoke with uh, the, the fire department in Kansas City this week, and they said that they're making three or four runs every day using the Narcan out there as well. So I think the Narcan's being used much more frequently than we realized. Otherwise, we'd be losing another 10 or 20 young adults every day in the state of Kansas. And I think just want to emphasize again that nobody's immune to this. We're Regardless of what part of city you live from, what your last name is, how much money your parents make, that nobody is immune from this. It's an accidental poisoning of our youth. And it is a prevalent, prevalent issue among youth. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, you know, I think number one is want to emphasize that the cartel is alive and well across the state of Kansas now, that these, these uh, drugs are smuggled up across the border. And it does emphasize, it, it, it is taking out young youth. This is the number one killer of our young adults across uh, the state of Kansas, across America. The United States has lost more young adults from fentanyl poisoning the past year than the entire losses during the Vietnam War. Now, outside of just raising awareness, when it comes to developing an action plan, yeah. at the federal level, what do you think Congress should consider? And is there any new legislation that you plan to introduce when you return to D.C.? Well, I think we've already laid a lot of the groundwork. Our Cooper Davis bill, named for Cooper Davis, a young, wonderful young man that he and his friends ordered just two Percocet tablets on, online. Cooper took one half of a tablet and died. So we named our legislation after him to force social media companies to cooperate operate with law enforcement. So we passed that through committee. This is a bipartisan bill. We hope we get that to the Senate floor for the vote. It makes it way through Congress on the other side as well. We've also had legislation uh, to make fentanyl a title a, a, a title one type of drug as well, a class one drug, which would also help law enforcement uh, enforce it as well. And give me an update on this Cooper Davis Act. Uh, how far along are you in that? Do you think that it's likely to pass sometime soon? Well, I, I think so. I, I hope that in September we get back that the, we'll find enough time in the legislative calendar to pass it. But sometime this fall, I do think that we'll get it to the Senate floor. We have the votes to do it. it again, it's a bipartisan bill. I think it has a great opportunity. I can't quite speak as uh, optimistically on the House side. Uh, they seem to have a lot of things on their plate right now. So unfortunately, I don't know where it'll make its progress on the House side. Is there anything that possibly can be done, do you think, at a state level in Kansas? Uh, what sort of legislation can they take up, can lawmakers this year, as they're going into session? Gosh, you know, Rebecca, I'm not sitting here thinking anything uh, jumps out to me. I think the best thing that they can do is is awareness and, you know, whatever we can do to push the cartel uh, out of here. And I think it would be to give the law enforcement even more, more tools, what, whatever they think would help them in that standpoint. Senator Marshall, thank you. Up next, we're sitting down with the director of the Kansas Bureau of Investigation. We're talking about the next steps for law enforcement. We'll be right back. Director Mativi, this week of action was focused primarily on raising awareness in communities across the state. We've spoken about how important this engagement and partnership is when it comes to this issue. What are you hoping that law enforcement also takes away from this week? 
Uh, this week is really important to us, Rebecca, because I can talk with you for hours about our targeted enforcement efforts, the things that we're doing to try to take fentanyl off the streets as law enforcement. Uh, I can tell you that since June, the KBI, in conjunction with our partners, ha we've managed to take more than 100,000 fentanyl pills off the streets uh, in Kansas, which I think is a tremendous accomplishment. But no matter how hard we work to do target enforcement as to fentanyl, there is no way we will be able to enforce our way out of this problem. We have to raise public awareness. We have to educate teenagers in particular, along with their parents, their teachers, and their friends about just how dangerous this drug is and that one pill really can kill. And that's what's so important about this week is that you are helping us get the word out and educate people about the, the just the terribly dangerous nature of this problem. It's making sure that the community also has the knowledge they need to combat this issue. This really has to be a whole of society approach. It can't just be law enforcement. We also talked about, you know, this being a prevalent issue among youth right now. I know one way schools have been combating the surge in opioid overdoses is stocking up on Narcan. So this is a medication that's supposed to reverse the effect of an overdose. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else law enforcement can do to work with schools to focus on drug prevention as opposed to the adverse effect of drug use? Yeah, the Narcan is important. Um, we are seeing right now about twice the number of Narcan saves that we're seeing as we're seeing deaths. So that means for every death that we see from a, nar from, uh, a fentanyl overdose, we see two people saved by Narcan. So that's huge, that's very important. Again, what we're doing as law enforcement to target our enforcement um, at fentanyl is very important. But the main thing is we've got to educate people on the problem. We're, you know, fentanyl overdoses are the leading cause of death for Americans under 40, but we know that these dealers are particularly targeting kids and they're using social media. So not only do we have to teach the kids how dangerous this is and that it, it, experimenting is really nothing that can be tolerated anymore because it may very well kill you, but we have to let the parents know that their kids are getting this through social media and they have to be aware of what their kids are doing on social media to help protect them. And we were speaking with Senator Marshall and his legislation that's moving mm -hmm. forward on the federal level. How big of an impact could that have with an issue like this? So Senator Marshall has been an incredibly valuable partner. The, the legislation is important. He's also been leading roundtable discussions around the state where he brings law enforcement leaders together with community members, both from the the schools and from healthcare. And that's, I think, really important to get us all talking and working together because we all see the problem from a different perspective. If we add the legislation on top of that, I think we could really get a synergistic sort of compounded help here. And that's really what we need when dealing with a problem of this magnitude. Now, this week of action is just one step I know mm -hmm. that the state is taking. Not too long ago, we spoke about the Joint Fentanyl Impact Team, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, and how fentanyl tracking canine officers are now being added to the KBI. What are some of the next steps law enforcement is looking at to tackle this crisis? So the, so the JFIT, the Joint Fentanyl Impact Team, was huge. Um, we are targeting every single modality by which fentanyl can be trafficked into and through the state of Kansas. Uh, we have a wonderful partner with the Highway Patrol. Uh, the new superintendent is just a, a tremendous partner, very cooperative, working with us. Um, they already do a, a, a really great job with highway interdiction, with troopers getting out there and making traffic stops and finding people that are trafficking fentanyl on our roadways. The JFIT is going to add on top of that the ability to go after packages that are being mailed or shipped with fentanyl in them, aircraft that are flying fentanyl, buses, rail, uh, hotel, motel interdictions. We're really doing everything we can to go after every way that fentanyl can be trafficked into and through our state. But on top of that, we're also doing a social media campaign. Uh, Senator Marshall has people on his staff who generate social media content and they get that out to law enforcement and allow law enforcement to use that. And really the senator takes no credit for that. His logo's not on there. We at the KBI, for example, take those social media materials, put our logo on and push them out through our social media accounts thanks to the senator. So that's, a, that's a, I think, a, a huge step for us, something that we're doing very actively to engage the community in this effort. Director Mativi, thank you. And that was your look inside Kansas politics.